Christ. So, if we reflect again on our gospel, 
And we really think about this and what this is saying to us about these seeds, right? Barb and I find these seeds all around, and we find them where? But here in the church. And I feel like this is telling us that we need to be planted in the church. About six, seven months ago, I only found my only hope here. My only place of solace was here to come to church. And I believe what this little squirrel is telling us through the Holy Spirit is that we need to plant ourselves into the things of God. When we plant ourselves into the things of God and make our whole life centered on that, we will grow and produce great fruit. But if we have our seed and we plant it in places not like the church, but we plant our seed in things of the world, then we're going to be harvesting bad fruit. That personally, if we want to grow in Christ, as we remember from last week's homily, we talked about the mind of Christ and having the mind of Christ, when our minds can be taken over and captivated, we also, the scriptures tell us, we have to actually take captive all the things that come to us and discern them, whether they are good or right, and whether to think on them or not. This is cultivating our soil. And our soil must be cultivated, brothers and sisters. I've learned some things about that over the years, about planting in general, right? Because it applies. That's why the Lord uses this beautiful parable. Because it teaches us what it means to actually uh, have good soil. So I started planting a garden some years ago when I lived out east. And it took us three years to build the permaculture, the soil, to the point where it could be really producing good fruit. Three years it took us of working this soil in a particular way. And we didn't till any of it. We only did like a covering over the soil of wood chips and other things. And this is another principle that we must learn, which is that if you are to have your life be godly and have producing soil, okay, a producing life that produces good fruit in Christ, then you're going to need to have a covering over your soil. Okay? Your heart needs to be covered. Your mind needs to be covered. It needs to be protected. Because it can be highly influenced. And the soil, interestingly enough, if more farmers would realize this, if they would cover their soil, it holds all the nitrogen in and keeps the soil fresh and good and also doesn't have to be watered. Because the covering over top keeps the moisture inside, right? So the covering in our spiritual lives, I believe, is here in the church, right? Women wear head coverings. I, as a priest, wear a covering on my head to represent the King Christ, right? Really, men don't usually wear coverings on their heads in church. But uh, as, as a, representing Christ the King, I wear, I wear a, a crown, you might say, to represent him. But we're always to be covered, and we're to be covered in important things, like when you wake up in the morning, making the sign of the cross over your body. When you go to bed at night, making the sign of the cross over your body. This is a covering. This is something that covers you. I was reading the other day in my um, kind of reflection prayers and realized that we don't pray enough to our guardian angel. You know, each of us at our baptism were assigned a guardian angel. And I would venture to say that we neglect our guardian angel a lot. I know I do. And I just prayed to my guardian angel the other day and asked for some protection over something I was doing. But you know, we have to have the mind of Christ. In order to have that, we have to have good soil. We are the soil. So if your soil is rotted and has problems or is constantly worried about stuff or you're constantly uh, uh, thinking that you have some kind of control over your life, you know, that God doesn't control it, you control it, then, you know, it's going to be very difficult for good fruit to come out of your soil. And so I challenge you today to look at your own personal soil, right, your own personal life today, and evaluate your life. I like to go on a daily and a weekly basis, right? So we look at our lives uh, from a 
weekly basis, right? And we go from Sunday to Sunday. We start here with this great joy of the Lord. He gives us his strength through Holy Communion and through the preaching of the word and an understanding and an opportunity to praise and to worship him. And so he takes the opportunity to plant that seed in you right then. But then during the week, you have to cultivate that soil. You have to keep it going and keep it focused until you can come together again. So each day has to begin the right way and end the right way. And in between, you know, if you get upset at somebody and you get angry at somebody, you need to make it right with them before the end of the day. If you get mad at your mom, you got to say, I'm sorry, mom, I'm getting mad at you today. Or if a wife or husband are upset at each other, they have to come together again before the end of the day. You don't know what tomorrow holds. This is how we cultivate our soil. The seed, when it enters the soil, it actually has to die before it can come back to life again. So in a lot of ways, the seed represents the word, and that word is really about repentance. It's about the change of our hearts, the change of our lives. And so we have to die so that Christ can live and grow out of the the soil there. And, and there can be great fruit. The fruit of our lives, brothers and sisters, is how much we are close to God. Are we close to God or are we far from Him? This is the message of the Gospel. This is the message of the Holy Scriptures. St. Paul was given a thorn in his side, it says today, to buffet him. He had a pain his whole life. God put that in his life to give him struggle so that he would be better. And sometimes that's actually what it happens with plants. When we plant them, sometimes if they have a struggle, they do well. Some plants do better with struggle than others. Hmm? So we're all a little bit different because our soil is a little bit different. But if we continue to cultivate our soil around these things that we see around us, around the Holy Communion, around Holy Scripture, and more importantly, uh, when we leave here, is how do you cultivate silence in your life? How do you cultivate stillness and silence in your life when you leave here? Are you caught up with a phone on your, on your hip and on your hand all the time? Every minute you've got this holding and you're doing this, or are you distracted with some other thing that's always got your mind? Fathers tell us to love silence in a world that doesn't want to love silence. It wants your attention. Everybody out there wants you to hear their new take on life. But really to practice stillness, not just sitting still, but sitting still, but also getting your mind to sit still. It's a discipline and a practice, and it takes a lot of work. But this cultivation of the soil has to start in our mind. And it has to start with prayer. We must begin, and by the way, ultimate prayer is no words. Ultimate prayer is be still and know that I am God. It is silence. Because honestly, when we stand before God, we got nothing to say. We have nothing to say to God. So it's in this silence and the practice of it that we will cultivate our minds to have good soil. Because when the soil is filled with a lot of things that shouldn't be there, it impedes the process of growth and fruit. And so, you know, God calls us to trust Him in all things. But that act of trust, that act of faith, is a work of ours. And you have to cultivate that work. You have to work at it. You can walk your whole life and start believing the lies of the world, and, you know, that's where you're going to go. But if you say, no, no, it's not right. I, I, I trust God. He loves me. He cares for me. He knows my life. He knows my end. He knows my beginning. He knows where I will go. I trust Him. That act of trusting God, brothers and sisters, is how our soil transforms and changes. And so that these little seeds can become what? Tree. Big trees, right? Powerful. This is an oak tree. 
one of the most strongest, powerful trees in, on the earth, right? The oak is known for that. We want to be like that, brothers and sisters. So let's cultivate our soil. Let's cultivate what God has given us. And take the word that he gives us and, and allow it to bear great fruit. So it's fruit a hundredfold, right? A lot of fruit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory be forever.